Answers 10-Year Tip with Gary Dibley. Well, well, good well, evening. It, it is the 26th, 26th of August, August uh, which happens, happens to be a bank holiday, bank holiday on Monday. Um, um, it's 9 o'clock and it is time, time to tip to yourself, Gary Dibley, and, 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 and the ever capable modern mod master mod that, that is Mark. Mark. Um, 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 for the observant of you, you may notice that I look a little bit, I'll say, hey, but I look like every week. Yeah, busy, busy day today, and I've got echo, I would assume, because I have my headphones on and the echo should have gone now. Um, I'm a complete and utter tit and should have realized to actually turn my headphones off when I went live. Um, you can see how haggard I am. Um, there we go. Donkey, first error of the day. Um, I have very good reason for being haggard today um, and that is because uh, I have a child um, who is five years old and, uh, and you know what they want to do, they want to do all sorts of stuff. Um, it's a bank holiday. I promised her I would uh, I would take her out for the day, um, and we're just down the road from Chessington World of Adventures. And I I decided I wanted to play Spot the Vapor today um, at a, a resort like that type of thing. Let me show you this very very quickly, and I'll pop back into. And there we go, my wonderful daughter um, showing me what a great day she'd had at the end of it. Um, yeah, there were loads of people vaping today. Um, everywhere I looked, it seemed, in, in every queue, in, in every sort of, you know, bit of Chessington World of Adventures, somebody had an e-cig. Um, I approached quite a few people and said, would you mind having a little chat on, on camera? Um, and they just looked at me like I was a complete and utter loony um, and, and didn't want to be up for it but I think that's a chat hopefully um, for either Wednesday or Thursday if, if the guys you know if, if we're you know, looking for things to talk about that may be one we talk about on with the modding um, this week I, I actually am looking at a pound shop pipe uh, my pipe is still on standby and Mark um, makes what can only be described as the mother of all mods um, let's crack on with the modding and uh, and I'll catch you back here in a bit This week I'm going to be starting on a new tin mod and this one's going to be a bit different because I got this tin off Bob Oldgate at the last knees meet. Uh, thank you very much Bob for that. And I thought I'd mod this but it's slightly different to the other tins I've used. And for a comparison you'll see what I mean. If I put this tin side by side with it, they are the same height pretty much. This new one is a lot bigger. So, this mod's probably going to be a severely over the top mod in every way. So, what I'm planning on using will be twin 18650s. Will just fit inside there, and we've got a step down board, here a switch, and I'm probably going to take the potentiometer off and replace it with this little one, and that miser connector, and the over the top part, which is going to be this display. This is a display that gives you date and time, uh, sorry, time, not date, um, 
voltage and temperature, which is what this large probe is for. As you can tell, I'm not going to be posting this through the mail at any time soon. But it's definitely going to be an over the top mod. So that's going to fit somewhere like that. And we'll be good to go. I will put a circuit diagram on the forum at some point once I've worked out what it's going to be. So, probably the first thing we'll need to do is sort out where the display is going to go. So, I need to mask off the section. I probably want this. Somewhere in about there, I think. So that will do for that. And I'm just going to roughly mark this out about there, I think. for the ruler and I'll pop back and I'll start cutting it out. So there we have the display basically marked out and I'm just going to use the Dremel to cut it out. It's easy. finish that off in a second. Uh, one thing I can say about this tin, it's a much thicker material than some of these other ones. So this is going to make a very firm mod when it's done. And there we have it. One cut out fairly neat. I might have to do some trimming up at some point. But if I just throw all the wiring through here. And I'll explain what all the wires do uh, when I come to work on them. But there you can see hopefully see. It's fairly close. 
It's a little bit cut off on the ends, I think. But once I've sanded down, that should fit nicely. So, one job out of the way. I'll come back when I'm ready to do this. Right, we're back for a, another week, and uh, I know I showed you this last week. This was my if you like my Carto pipe and the new little drip tip I've got for it. Reason I'm onto pipes um, again is this is still in the same state it was. I really haven't had time to do anything for that. But I've had a little trip to the pound shop and uh, you can get this very nice little pipe from the pound shop. Um, we're going to show you how to do if you like, hopefully. This is going to say a quick and dirty mod on this, um, but we'll see how it goes. Essentially, what we're going to need today is our pipe, an 18350 battery, some earth magnets, a couple of bits of wire, and some form of switching, um, which is what I'll come on to next. Essentially, the earth magnets are going to be used, if you like, as our battery holder. They'll quite simply attach to the uh, pos and the neg pins. Um, one of these will probably be epoxied in the bottom so that will form your neg contact. Your top one will be removable so you should you know change in the battery easy. Pull the magnet off, pull the battery out, new one in, magnet on for your pos, job done. So it should hold it you know, relatively firmly in the bottom of the of the pipe as well. As you can see that is going to sort of sit down in there. We're open, we may have to do some jiggery pokery with the pipe. Realistically our pipe comes with this insert in, um, we're going to keep some of this um, but literally, I've literally drilled a little hole down in the middle there and that enables me to get a screwdriver in there and then just sort of start easing out this little insert bit that's in there. As you can see, it'll start wobbling that around and your little insert will attach to your, uh, your doodles. So we'll probably have to dremel a bit of this off because this is going to end up being, if you like, our insert. Once that's off you can see how well our battery is going to sort of sit down inside there. So there may be a bit of jiggery probably to do. 510 connection as it sits uh, standard at the moment will just literally drop down and we're epoxy one of those in there. Looking at how we're going to switch this, now there are various ways of doing it, one of which is to use, um, if you like, what I've got here is the Ego Electronics, so you can have a manual switch and you can mount the switch so it comes through the side bowl of the pipe. The other way of doing it is to use um, what I have here is, this is uh, this was one of the little disposable, uh, not disposable, but one of the little kits from, uh, from eSig Wizard and this is obviously a, a sucky job so we can try and use a, a sucky switch on it. What I've done or what I'm going to do, the way that we used to do this historically, I'll show you, um, was to use a, uh, this is a 901 battery of, of times gone by. Um, it is bright aluminous pink and the reason it's bright aluminous pink was because I was sent quite a lot of these to, uh, to look at and investigate. The way that we used to dissect these um, would be to put an old 901 Atty on the top literally give that a little jiggle around and it frees up your connection you can then just pop off your bottom cap easier said than done and poke that through careful not to short any of it out then your entire sort of battery would come through. Now I have in the past successfully reused um, one of the, the little uh, if you like the, the sucky switches um, and attached that to a 510 connection. Um, as you can see the reason that a little, little bit of history as well the reason that these were so problematic is obviously that is your switch down in there that is your sucky switch and obviously juice used to get through here and clog up the switch. So switches of, of days gone by. Now the interesting thing with, with the new switches that I've found 
um, on this one in particular, as I say, this this is the one that Issa Grizzard were doing, and, and I think they're about a tenner for a couple of batteries and car toes. Um, totally different arrangement in there. I've actually dissected one down, and if you, you look at it this way around, you actually got your, your ATI connection, which would go here. Now, the actual micro switch, or the sucky switch, is actually down on the bottom of the battery, and that is also the LED that's, that's sort of uh, in there as well. So a lot less chance of juice unless you flood the thing. It's got to go you know, right in the casing, right the way down through the battery to, to flood the thing at the bottom. Two ways of looking at it. I don't know how we're going to do it. We're either going to try and reuse this this one um, and build that into the pipe, or we may even go down the uh, the Ego Electronics route. If we don't do it today, we we'll do it at some point. The other thing to look at is um, if you like, if you've got an old SD battery lying around. Um, the old SD battery will pretty much, if you look at the diameter of that, will probably sit very nicely in the top of this pipe. Mine's still working, so I'm not going to dissect that yet. What I'm going to do is pop away and just have a look at how I'm going to start putting this together. Um, and, uh, and we'll come back in two. And there we go, the start of, uh, of two new mods. Um, the pipe is actually going to be done and dusted um, in this week. Uh, I'm, I'm going to try and play catch up on, on, the, uh, on my own little sort of uh, wooden pipe, as we say. Now, I'm glad that this time we come back, um, there was no echo. And the only reason you have echo when you do one of these shows is you put your headphones on. Um, there's a little headphone symbol and you click that and, and you get your feedback um, and you hear the constant loop through the PC, the amp and everything coming back out to you live. So I've remedied that, you know, I've remedied it and um, I've put myself up a little uh, notice um, just so I can now remember that when I am um, broadcasting to turn my headphones off and that will be fixed there forever um so hopefully no more echo it's time to slip into our first little air break i will pop back very shortly after this liberty flight sponsors 10 year tip with gary dibley in Yorkshire for your EC needs. That's iVeber.co.uk and iVeber-Elixir.co.uk iVeber and iVeber-Elixir.co.uk Proud sponsors of VeberTrails.tv Liberty Flight sponsors 10-year tip with Gary Dibley. we are back in the room once again the ads just fly I don't know where they go um, but yes today I have been uh, abused at um, Chessington World of Adventures and I was very 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 surprised at the amount of people I see taking a toke on um, an electronic cigarette today um, it, it was you know it surprised me it wasn't that I was looking for it but I think it, you know once you get the eye in um, and most I would say probably 90% of them were um, the cigar likes unfortunately um, not fortunately it, it, it just goes to show that they are out there and, and the mainstream and people are using them and and I started talking to a few people and um, they looked at me like I was a complete and utter loony now I don't know whether that's just the look that I get normally um, but you know my wife was going just leave it just leave them alone um, but yeah I mean one bloke I had a good conversation with um, uh, really good chat 
wanted to have a you know a little interview with him on camera because I had the camera there, um, but he declined gratefully because he was he was in the queue for the um, the vampire or something, and um, that was more important. You, you know, he only paid eighty quid to get in for the day. You know, it's stupid. You should have spoke to me, man. Um, but yes, all good fun, and on with the modding. As I say, that may be another discussion point to take up at another time. Um, I've got lots and lots and lots of uh, sort of feedback from today, um, and uh, want to spill the beans. Uh, but let's crack on with our our modding. Um, Mark is making. I'm going to call it the monster tin. Um, it will probably cost him about a grand to post it anyway, um, but it looks damn good. And you should see the wires that are going into it. I don't know what you're going to use a probe for, Mark. Really don't. Um, but I'm really interested in finding out. And there you have the display in place. It's not perfectly straight against the case, but it'll do for me. Because, you know, nothing of mine is ever straight. And in my enthusiasm to fit this in place, I have fitted it all the way in. And it's incredibly firm. I don't think I'll be able to get it back out. So, it's something to watch for if you're going to do it. It's held in so well, I probably won't need to add any glue or anything like that to it. I think it'll just sit there. And I got lucky because I can still drill this with this in place. It won't quite hit. So what I intend to do is put the 510 connector on the top as usual. And I'm going to add the switch to the side here. Which will just fit in there. That'll give me a nice position, I think. I will have to, at some point, drill out two holes for the controls for the display. But that will wait for now until I figure out exactly where I want to put them. So, on with the drilling, I think. I'll start off with my usual pilot hole to make life a bit better. Very careful of. And then of course all the bits are going to fall inside. And I'll start this hole off with this bit. for a bigger bit, if I could find it. Just a sec. So I've marked this off at a half inch, which should be around about the right size for this type of switch. So I'm just going to very carefully finish this hole off now. which appears to be bigger than I thought. Right. I should pop back when I've had a think. Right, as you'll see from this, 
there is not enough room to increase this hole size any further really so that ain't gonna fit so instead I'm gonna go for one of these horn switches and that's easy gonna fit in there no problem at all so it's always good to have alternative parts around if you've got a good selection you can normally make something work right while I'm busy I thought you may notice this temperature probe has a very long cable on it. Now, I could shorten this cable if I wanted to. And then, I could actually attach it to the chip on the drop down board, and that would give you a temperature reading for the unit so you know, it's not overheating. Or, I can leave it as long as this, have it lying loose in the box, and tell you the general temperature inside the box. Then you've always got the option of taking it out. You can test the temperature on your coil, temperature in your fridge, anything like that. So it can have multiple uses, but probably will never get used for any of them. Right, now I'll be back once I've planned out exactly where I want these switches to go. So I've laid out my components here and now I could force this battery holder a bit further down. There is enough room in between the display and the board to fit those switches in. But I've got a lot of spare room up at the top here, so I thought I'll use that instead. So basically I'm just going to... dot where I think I want it to go. Apparently I want it to come further down. So I'll use that second set I think. Right so I think I've decided to go with the with the Ego Electronics. So I've just mocked those up um, very very quickly uh, to test the little board. Um, people have asked how you wire these up because they only come with three wires. They come with a red, a yellow and a black wire. Quite simply your red wire off this board is going to be like the positive pin on your battery. Um, I've just got this you know, temporarily tacked on to, to a magnet. Your yellow um, goes out to the centre pin of your atomizer connection. And the black wire essentially is split between your negative pin on your battery and the uh, neg on the attic connection. Nice and simple. So it's red to your pods on your battery, yellow to the centre pin on your attic, black is split between outer on your on your battery and um, negative on the battery terminal. I'm just going to bring in a little battery, um, take me bits off, and as you can see my little switch is firing. I think these are one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, that's turned off. Dump and turns on again. So, and obviously there's the charging circuit built in these as well. Let me just pop an Etsy on. Give it a test fire. So I don't know if you can hear that, but essentially it should be working. So we're working on that. Just testing it outside the mud, and essentially that is how we're going to wire it in into our pipe. Um, next stage that I need to do is just take a look at our switch position. So I'm just going to roughly mark out where I want my switch to go. I'm just going to drill a hole. Um, the one thing I will do, which I won't show you, obviously these wires are incredibly sort of paper thin. Um, I'm going to be replacing these. Um, it takes a, a, a little bit of a delicate hand but literally desoldering these wires on I'm going to put some, some chunky funky wires on there um, and uh, I'll come back when I've got a, sort of a hole drilled and my chunky wires on. Um, relatively speaking this is our, our pipe this is this is basically now it's sort of fitting into the case so it's, it's not a massive massive job. I will pop back into just come back in very briefly. All I've done is gone away and, and 
taken these wires off the board and, and put a lot more substantial wires on so they should now be working with me at Eon I've just got it all wired up just to test it before we start building it into the pipe what I've also gone away and done is drilled a small little hole just inside there um, enough for my little switch to pop in there. Now the way I'm going to handle this board is I'm actually going to um, position everything up um, on the inside. Um, it's going to be, as I say, a lot of sort of how to's talking rather than showing because I'm trying to get this done in one here if we can. Now I'm going to position the board um, inside here with my switch peeping through as you can probably see there. So just so it's on the inside there. Um, and then what I'm going to do is epoxy um, the board in place on the inside. I need to, to cut one of the wires um, which is going down to the neg, um, get that fixed onto uh, a magnet and I'm going to epoxy that down in the bottom. So essentially it's realistically now, obviously I've got two wires already that I can feed up to, uh, to Mietti. I've got me my output which is coming off the top of this board which is a single wire going up to your ATI connection I can feed those through they will be there ready to take the ATI I can get this epoxied in positive pin on the uh, or the neg pin sorry down in the bottom um, and, uh, and hot glued or epoxied into the bottom of the pipe um, so it's more of a not a showing um, showing you the processes but not showing you necessarily the soldering and, and the gluing uh, but literally it is going to be a case now of, of just positioning that up and epoxying that board in place behind that switch. I'll get that done and I'll come back into it. Right, so I've been away and I've been busy. Um, you can probably see I have uh, a little button down in there now. Now effectively if you can see down inside um, here, all I've done is thrown my two wires that were coming off for my atty um, through this end here. I've literally epoxied um, the board in and I left that with the uh, it's quite easy you can position that while you're you're sort of holding it for the uh, for the button um, and then literally just on the Dremel I've, I've taken back the ridge popped a little tiny dibber super glue on on that button and uh, and drop that down in on the switch so effectively what that means is I've got my pipe with my ego electronics in now I'm gonna look at doing this a different way um, than, than probably what I've had salt. I'm just going to chuck the battery on just for two ticks and you see my button's flashing away I'm just holding it literally across the pins of the battery and I can press my button and I know that's going to be firing me at it. So in terms of, of wiring we, we've got four connections left uh, which are our two for our Eti and our two for our battery. Now I was going to make this with a magnet and a removable battery um, but I'm actually making this for a, a guy at work um, he looked at everything um, and, and he wanted to sort of give the e-cigs a go but nothing's really appealed to him until I showed him this which was a pipe and that was the first thing he said yes please that looks the I won't say exactly what he said but he said it looked good um, in a more forceful way than that. So for a quid um, and some little ego electrics what I'm going to actually do is because this has got a built-in charging board um, I am going to make it with a standard 510 but I'm also going to then make a little adapter um, so to charge this you'll just screw it onto your normal sort of ego charger um, and it will charge up the 18350 inside there and that will take a little while obviously but I want to make this a sealed unit, I don't want him messing with it, I know what the guy's like. Um, if you're watching Tony, I do apologise. But I'm going to make it a sealed unit. So effectively I'm going to hard wire, hard solder the uh, an IMR battery onto this and effectively make it a sealed unit. If you wanted to make it um, differently and you want to make it with a removable battery, you can do as I said with the magnets. Feed one magnet down in the bottom, solder it onto to this, a floating magnet on here, and effectively you just pop this one off off the top of your battery, pull your battery out and you can change it over. 
I want this to be sealed um, purely because I know what the guy's like. Um, I'm going to be teaming this as well. Um, I was looking around and I found a old Carto tank. Now it's a, a mini Carto tank um, and that actually fits the diameter of that beautifully. So I'll be giving him a Carto tank uh, to go with it. Um, fresh Carto and some pipey type tobacco -y stuff to go in it. Next steps. Um, I've got a special plan uh, for a drip tip. I've got a special plan um, for a top cap. Um, whether my special plans will actually work, I do not know. Um, what I'm going to do, I'm actually charging a battery at the moment. So I'm going to pop away while that's charging, um, fire up the lathe, um, and, uh, and I'll pop back in two. And we're back in the room once again. And I noticed in chat there, somebody said, uh, what sort of gauge wire do you use? Now, you've probably seen um, me sort of floating one of these in some of the shows. Now, this particular spool here, I picked up from Maplin's. Um, it's a 100 meter sp uh, spool. And basically, I think it's about a 16 gauge uh, or 16 strands um, why it's a quite it, it's you know nice enough to work with it moves around enough um, seems solid enough gives good connection to everything I made um, so 16 strand uh, Maplins do this oh, I think it's about 10 quid a tub for 100 meters um, that's what I use you can probably see the red one back there in in the background stick that one back on top um, so yeah that's what we use let me chuck into my second little ad break I'll pop back very shortly after this Liberty Flight sponsors 10 Year Tip with Gary Dibley. Sponsors 10 Year Tip with Gary Dibley. And there we are, back in the room once again. So, yeah, as I was saying, we use, uh, well, I use a 16 gauge wire for most of the stuff that I'm working on. Um, the only reason is I bought 100 meters of the stuff and it seems to be lasting an absolute age. Unfortunately, I had a death in the family um, this week. Um, the Dremel that I've been using on many of the shows um, decided to spit flames at me. Um, and it went out in, in true style. Um, it did literally, I, I panicked for a bit. I thought the workshop was going up in flames. Um, it decided to throw flames at me um, and it just went out the door, or that door, or the one over there. Um, yeah, so uh, behind me now, this one, there's a new Dremel. Um, which uh, which comes with uh, an extendy bit that you can dremel stuff from a distance. Have fun with that. Um, I'm sure we'll be playing with that very very shortly because I have got the I've still got my pipe finish uh, and I've got the DNA 20 mod to do at some point. Um, so all good fun. Let's crack on with Mark's uh, next little bit in his uh, epic tin adventure, um, and then I should be showing you the final bit of my pipe. Use that second set, I think. Thank you. 
hopefully they're in the right place. Put my marking out in a minute. As usual, I should just be able to take this out to the, I think it's the first or the second mark. Should fit through there, but I've missed. I'll be able to see that. These don't quite match up. So, to fix that, I'm going to have to rewire these with a couple of switches of my own, I think. So, I'll have to pop back and I think what I'm going to do. So I've had a bit of a think and what I'm going to do is just add my own two switches and just wire them up from these three wires with simple enough construction of a negative and there's two switch wires. So I'll need to take a negative to both switches and then one of these wires to the other side of each switch. Um, I'll have saved it again. So that for those keep my score, that's one mistake. Two mistakes. Not quite straight, three mistakes. And I'm out. Now at this point some of you may be thinking this bloke's an idiot and you could well be forgiven for thinking that. Uh, with all these mistakes, I could, with some clever editing, have quite easily hidden up, hidden away all these mistakes just shown you the switch I'm going to use instead of deliberately like that uh, let's see I've decided I've just cut a bit in where I've decided I'm going to cut this off and add my own switches because it would be easier there's several things I could have done but I'll leave these things in for two reasons one I don't think it's fair to show a perfect mod every time going through because that can just put people off and we're trying to encourage people to have a go at modding themselves. And the second one is no matter what you do wrong with these mods, well almost no matter what you do wrong with these mods, there's always some way you can fix it and I don't know of any modder out there that's set out to make a mod for the first time of a particular type and made it perfectly first time without a single having to make a single change, adjustment, or whatever that they haven't counted on. Because things in your head go a lot easier and you can lay it all out and you can see how it's going to work. But when you actually come to do it, it changes. And since I've put this display in place I noticed that the tin was flexing a bit when I've been drilling the holes so I will be adding probably the two part epoxy putty to a lot of this I need to put a layer here anyway to protect the board from the tin because it's conductive so I'll probably be adding epoxy around the display to firm it all up so it doesn't flex out of place and again I'll be using it for a lot of the components it will add a bit of weight to it, but there's everything on this box is over the top, I don't think it's really going to matter. 
This is more a fun home mod rather than a going out mod, I think. But we'll see what we end up with next week. Bye for now. Right, basically, while my battery was charging, I've made a few bits on the lathe. Um, and uh, I'm gonna, as you can see, I've probably, I've soldered on my ASI connection, which we've all seen before. Um, the two that we had coming through, red to the center pin, negative to the outer pin. Um, I've got my battery that uh, is now fully charged, just a little IMR 18350, and I've just put some solder tabs on the top and the bottom, which I'm just now going to very briefly solder up my pos to my pos end, flip it over. You'll ask me at face today and put my uh, neg end on the bottom. So hopefully, with that in place, if you like, that is my completed mod. I've got my little clicky button there, and I think it will do the on offy so you can turn it on and off. Turn it on. Hopefully, if I, I had a car somewhere, Stick my car on. I'm getting a nice fire on the car, so let me just have a chuff. So we are working. Where do I go from here? Now, the simple thing, I've got to glue my ATI connection in, and then I'm going to feed this battery back down inside the cavity. Now, I am going to feed that right down inside, so it is, if you like, a permanent fix. I'm going to put something on there just to stop it rattling around so it's in there, so I'm going to pad out the sides ever so slightly. Then I need to refit the original top cap. Now, I've made some changes to the top cap because obviously that was a well, um, and I've been on the, uh, on the lathe um, with a chunk of, uh, of this black stuff. Now, I made a little button, a little black button, to go on the top of there. So when that seats inside, it'll look something like that. Um, I've also, because I'm going to be using that mini Carto tank, um, I've turned a, a tip out of the same material, which I'll show you later. So effectively, if you're trying to follow this step by step, it is now a case of fixing your ATI connection, fixing your battery, um, so it doesn't rattle around. Now, I'm not going to glue in the top cap, because this is perfectly still serviceable. If the battery ever goes, it's just a case of taking the top cap, you know, top cap out, unsoldering the battery and putting a new one in. I want this to be ego charged. It's got the ego circuit in it, I might as well make use of it. So a permanent battery um, is, is a good solution and the way that the guy is going to use it who I'm giving this to, I think it will suit him down to the ground. Bit of epoxy in, uh, a bit of gluing um, and then I'll pop back into it. Okay, so I've got my battery installed, and what I've done is put a little drop, ever such a tiny drop of hot glue, just to see that up so it doesn't rattle around. Now, it's still perfectly serviceable and usable. My button's still working. Got my five press job. They're still going. My Atty is now seated in. And we're firing. Couple of finishing touches. What I need to do now is fit my top cap with my little black boobly end thing that I've done. Um, that's going to take a bit of jiggery pokery with the wires, um, making sure that I can get it seated down in there nicely. Um, and then I'll be back and uh, sort of show you pretty much where we are finished. Um, I've managed to sort my car to air, which is soaking nicely now. Um, and I'm using, um, I put in for him the uh, the liquor stuff, the traditional tobacco. Um, it's only 18 mil. Um, I think that will be sufficient for him. It's what I'm using in my big pipe. And to be honest, that traditional tobacco stuff, the liquor. Mm. It's damn good. <laughs> Let me <coughs> go away. As I say, I'm not fixing this, I just need to ease it back in the top. It's the original cover. I need to put
push that back in so it fits relatively flush-ish and, uh, and I'll come back and show you it all assembled and uh, hopefully vaping away. Obviously made this on a lathe, I'm going to give you a sneak preview of a matching pipe tip I've made. It's looking good now, so it's all going to be matching. I'm going to pop back into and I am back. Um, I've installed my little black knobby thing. Um, now you could you could potentially make a top switch for these, nice and easy. As I say, I'm making this for a guy at work. I think he's going to like the Ego Electronics at the moment. We're off. We're now on, and we should be firing. The one thing I'm going to add to this is my little drip tip that I made, yep. which fits, I think perfectly with the contours of the pipe and the um, and the Etty on there. I think that is looking quite nice for a pound shop job. Um, if you want more information on how to do this just drop me a bell, uh, drop me a bell, drop me a line. Obviously I've, I've tried to to rush this so it's done in, in sort of you know in the week um, I've, I've got to obviously finish my other pipe and I thought I shouldn't leave you pipeless. So the first time I've, I've done one of these um, with the Ego Electronics, never really tried one before. Um, it is obviously great having the lathe to be able to make your own tip, this that, and the other. It's definitely, it's definitely a pointer, this one, definitely a pointer. Um, very, very happy with it. Um, let's see what it vapes like. very well indeed um, obviously a low res cartel in there off the standard ego electronics it does the job it does the job very well so there we go this week's little pipe back to me in the studio not bad for a quick I nearly miss that. I was uh, vaping said pipe then when I should have been pressing buttons. It goes quite well. I think the, the Ego Electronics obviously they, they do um, sort of restrict the voltage down but with the low risk cut on there it does a job and to be honest that is for somebody who is new to vaping so I hope he likes that very much. Um, what do we have coming up for you this week? Um, obviously tomorrow night is Tuesday and we have Vapor Scene with Marco followed by DE Talk um, and then on Wednesday I think Day has, has, has renamed this to Wednesday Waffle um, but I think I still know it as, uh, as Team Talk Right, so I'm all I can see is Sav yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I talk a lot. I'm sorry. Hello and welcome to the Here's Hour. I forgot the second half of that sentence. I've got to have a word. I forgot I had to continue. <laughs> yeah, the Here's Hour sponsored by Safe Six. Have we still got viewers? Mm. Yeah, we've got 87 currently watching. I've got 88. Yeah, I've got 88. Yeah, I did. Yeah, someone's not she watching. She's not watching, Dad. <laughs> 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 yeah, that's right. I was looking at the rug screen. <laughs> so there we go. Yes, team talk on Wednesday, followed by sort of a haze hour-ish team talky thing again on Thursday. Um, on Friday... Um, we don't have anything, but you can very well join Tim and the crew at RY4 Radio.
And on Sunday, we have Dave Kitson, um, obviously, with his tackle box. Um, obviously, there, there's been a few comments in chat um, popping up as, uh, as that's been going out. Um, where Mark got his display thing from, I do not have a clue. Um, you know, pop Mark a PM and, and I'm sure he'll answer it. Um, as for the pipe, um, the pipe was from the pound shop. Um, you can get the uh, 510 connector from pretty much most places now. I think Liberty Flight sell them. Who is my show sponsor? As to Stealth Vapes and, and quite a few others out there, that, you know, sell the standard 510 connection. Uh, you need a obviously an 18350 battery um, and all the other bits and pieces. The Ego Electronics you can get from most of the uh, either you know Liberty Flights again or Stealth Vapes sell the Ego Electronics kit. The, the whole kit, including a battery, is not going to cost you probably more than 15 quid to be honest with you. Um, if you've got an old Ego battery lying around, you, exactly the same board is in an Ego battery. You can strip that out and um, you know reuse the board. The wiring and the colouring may well be different, but on most of those boards, they do actually sort of put, if you like, it's quite a simple in and out. Um, normally, on, on the input side of the board is where your two wires go. Um, one's going to be black, um, which is obviously your negative. Um, they may use a white, which is going to be your positive. And then on the output, there's another white. That's probably your output side. Um, as I said earlier, if you want to have a go at making the pipe, um, have, have a play. Um, you can wire the Ego Electronics outside of the box first, to, you know, to make sure you've got it all wired up properly. Um, and, and they're quite resilient. Um, it's, it's quite hard to blow one of those boards, to be honest with you. Even if you wire it around the wrong way, it will just flash at you. Um, and the reason it flashes at you is if you're like a, a dead short, as in bugger off, I'm not working. Um, so you can get them from a lot, a lot, a lot of places. And once you master that, you can put those into any other holder that you wish to do so. I've used the, the same scenario um, rather than a pipe. I've, I've done it in a 14500 box, um, in a tin, in, in whatever. Um, the, effectively, the pipe is just a holder um, and it's made to take or, or made to fit the components you know that you've got. I know um, Leanne Norley said, what if I haven't got a lathe? Well, most people on the top cap would use... Um, a decorative button you know anything that will fit in that hole to be honest with you um, just to hide the you know the, the pipey bit um, lots and lots of ways of, of disguising that and obviously you don't have to make a drip tip um, I'm lucky enough to have a lathe um, that I can make that sort of stuff on and you know I, I do because I enjoy it um, but if you don't standard drip tip will do so you don't you're not restricted um, by any means shape or form in in the way that you do that um, you know, the, the, the major tools you're going to need there is going to be a soldering iron, uh, a glue gun or epoxy, um, a 510 connection, an ego board and a battery. Um, the rest is up to your imagination. The thing that this is not about is not giving you exact and, you know, precise instructions. As Mark said earlier, we all make mistakes. I think my mod changed about three times during the course of that. It was going to be mounted on magnets, you know, etc, etc. It changed. It actually evolved as I went on. As did Marks. Um, so by no means are you, you know, tied to what we do. Take it as a guide and and sort of expand on that. Um, with all that said, it is time um, for me to wrap this up tonight. Now, guys, um, with all that, it has been absolutely emotional once again. Uh, we'll see you back here next week. Take care. Good night. Tip with Gary Dibley.